the 2022 general elections in Kenya has been hailed as the most peaceful election since the promulgation of the 2010 constitution. The past history of cyclic electoral violence motivated a strong focus on preventative actions by civil society organizations, national and international actors. This is an account of the role played by all these actors that contributed to peaceful elections. The State Department of Interior played a very key role to ensure that security in this country was properly coordinated by establishing a national command center that ensured all the stakeholders playing a major role in security were all involved. Secondly, National Security Committee on Peace Building and Conflict Management coordinated all peace actors in this country, including NCIC, UNDP, and all others that played a role to ensure that this country enjoyed a peaceful general election. In Kenya, the religious leaders uh, walked a long journey since 2018, and uh, we have been doing dialogue all along, scenario buildings, and getting to understand actually where the country is. Close to the elections, we formed the National Peace and Mediation Team. We had constantly, regularly, for over 30 days prior to the elections, sending peace messages through the media, through our uh, religious centers, and through the community centers, to congregations where each time we got the opportunity, all the religious leaders got together and sent the same message. A certain team of the youth in the National Peace Mediation Team were also directly engaged with the youth. During the election, we were able to share information, information of peace, not only peace, and then peer we were able to counter the levels of the youth who were fighting the especially if we were misinformation, and then peer to understand more than to be a play a very good role in our to maintain peace. At the national level, we had the network of women in mediation, very strong and powerful force, um, working also hand in hand with the African Women Leaders Network uh, for solidarity, just to ensure that the elections in Kenya would be peaceful. We worked with the UNDP to monitor the social media and also the offline platforms for hate speech. Through the, the MAPEMA consortium, the commission was able to identify over 800 cases. Through also the partnership of uh, global tech companies, we were able to withdraw some of those hateful messages and misinformation and disinformation. So some of the strategies that the commission undertook in this uh, 2022 election process is setting up an early warning response mechanism. And this was housed um, through an internal portal and it had the ability of collecting and analyzing human rights trends and patterns across the country. And lastly, one of the interventions that the Commission undertook in 2022 was having a sustained public education and awareness campaign where we educated and built the capacity of members of the public on their human rights during election. We utilize community radio using vernacular um, languages. We were able to increase the scope of Kenyans that we reached. At least six months prior and, and during the election period, we had deployed uh, more than 110 monitors across the country. And their job was to ensure that uh, if there was any um, uh, incidents uh, that were likely to affect uh, the citizens from participating in the election process, that we were able to document it and highlight it so that there was a lot of intervention. So we received that information and we shared 
both with the UN agencies, the police in Kenya, uh, the electoral bodies, and other civil society actors, so that we were we had a very robust intervention uh, mechanism across the country. And I think the things that are really important for other countries to learn from, perhaps, is, for example, investment in um, police training, ensuring that the county commanders, the different police station commanders, that they know what their job is and how to do human rights based policing. We probably had the biggest investment in police training um, in the history of this country. A lot of police officers were trained over this period. The second stream of work was really protecting the independent offices and the constitutional commissions. And I think this is one of the um, elections where we saw um, institutions like, for example, the Director of Public Prosecutions um, offer helplines to people to essentially make sure that if the police did not act on their cases, the Director of Public Prosecutions would instruct police officers to support people to get justice. The support provided by the UN um, to Haki Africa that contributed to a peaceful election in Kenya was uh, tremendous. First of all, they supported us to do community dialogue forums. Basically what these forums were trying to do is to tease out the security issues that were within communities so that we can have those issues explored and uh, you know addressed before they became uh, security concerns in uh, relation to elections. After the pronouncement of uh, uh, the elections by the IEBC, it was a bit chaotic. There were people who felt that uh, you know, justice was not done, and they had their own expectations. And then, therefore, we had to now do the shuttle diplomacy and uh, visited the different uh, leaders or the leadership of the different parties. And another team was also formed to visit the two teams of the IEBC because, as you know, IBC was divided into two and urged that, uh, you know, we embrace peace and uh, seek audience, uh, you know, or, or settlement through the judiciary. And we are happy that, uh, you know, those that felt the justice was not done went to the courts and eventually the court gave its ruling. The violence of the 2007 elections gave Kenya an incredible 2010 constitution and that 2010 constitution gives you the ropes around the electoral wrestling ring. In a wrestling ring all kinds of nonsense will go on. The ropes are to keep that nonsense in the arena where it belongs and not let it spill out into the audience. What are those ropes? They're the police, the courts, they're the media, they're the national peace infrastructure, uh, they're the electoral bodies. Our job as the United Nations was to be the pillars holding up those ropes so that they could do their job. The way the system worked is it was built around uh, layers of safety nets. If the first system fails, we have a second system that pulls it up. This system was comprehensive, included uh, governmental, non-governmental actors, civil society, international actors, everybody came together. We learned that we have to have special approaches to make sure that women are included, not only in voting, because women are the ones who vote, but the understanding what kind of leader do they want. The electoral period in 2022 compared to 2017 was in fact uh, much less marked by violence and human rights violations. I think that this was a result of sustained efforts by Kenyan institutions, by civil society organisations, by human rights defenders and communities supported by international partners such as the United Nations to sustain prevention efforts and preparedness. What has made a difference, I believe, is really drawing on partnerships that have been cultivated over years. For us as UNDP, the importance of the electoral cycle approach is paramount. 
So starting early, ensuring you're working with the key institutions related to elections, ensuring you're working with non-state actors in terms of peaceful messaging and engagement and communication is also quite important. So I would say that ensuring that we prepare early at least three to four years before an election to make sure that it's not just the event, but you're actually strengthening institutions, structures, systems, and the people's right to vote. The 2022 elections and the transition that followed was a miracle. It was peaceful, it was dignified, it was democratic. And the problem with a miracle is you often end up taking it for granted. Democracy is a really fragile thing anywhere in the world, and it always needs to be guarded, it always needs to be renewed. The danger would be to forget that. The opportunity now is for us to continue to support and invest in those constitutional institutions that did their job in August and September, before and after.